That story, we are joined on the line by reporter Sarah Kimani in Nairobi, Kenya. Sarah, good afternoon. This sounds very interesting. Tell us all about the DDR Center. Well, uh, the DDR Center, this will be the fourth one in Kismayo. Remember, Kismayo uh, was a hotbed of the al Shabaab militant group uh, and one of the vital ports for them because they used it uh, for most of their finances. So there are a lot of defectors there. Most of them are either in prison or they're being sheltered by the Somali government or by the African Union. Uh, troops. So uh, what will happen is that uh, it will have programs that they will be taught uh, uh, what that they can do, uh, prog productive jobs that they can do so that once they leave uh, the, the DDR centers and they're reintegrated with their families, then they will be productive people in society. But they will also be uh, taught stuff that will be able to uh, speak to them against what they have learned from the Al-Shabaab militant group during the time that they have been training with them, during the time that they have been uh, working at, with them uh, in attacking uh, the country, in attacking countries neighboring uh, Somalia. So it's a comprehensive program. Uh, what we do not know in the syllabus is how long uh, the program will take and how long it will take uh, before these young people can be released or reintegrated back into society. Look, Sarah, I know you've just mentioned the different scenarios, but how do members of Al-Shabaab really get away from their leaders and decide to disarm? Take us through that process. Well, what has happened is that uh, as the as the um, African Union forces uh, continue to uh, gain ground inside Somalia and take more uh, areas where Al Shabaab was in charge, some are either arrested or some of them, even before uh, the troops get there, they decide to abandon uh, the, tra the, the, the the activities and they decide to uh, either surrender to the local authorities or to community groups which have been uh, formed to deal with these issues. Or they actually uh, wait to be arrested if they are not killed and they are arrested by the army Somalian troops or the Somali National Army. And then uh, those who are willing uh, then say that they are willing to abandon the tr the, what they have been doing mm -hmm. and are willing to be part of uh, the reintegration process and are willing uh, to join society formally. For the longest time they have uh, to stay under protection because any defectors then face a lot of uh, backlash either from the Al-Shabaab militant groups leadership or those who are still in Al-Shabaab or also from communities, most of them fearing that they could still be spies for the militant group. So um, once then they they surrender or they are arrested and they're taken through the process and they can be reintegrated in society. Uh, by the time they are surrendering, then they have to uh, disarm or give out, surrender their weapons. Mm. Or if they've been arrested, then they're, they're, they're uh, weapons are taken by force by the government. Look, Sarah, will the center just focus on Al-Shabaab militants or other militant members who just want to disarm? Well, uh, mo you know, most of the uh, military, unlike other countries in the region where you find there are other rebel groups, the main militant group in Somalia is, of course, the Al-Shabaab militant group. And so this is the focus for uh, the international community and also for the Somali government and the African Union. The reason they're concentrating on these young people is because as they win ground and as they uh, continue to take charge of most parts of the country, there is a big group of young people who, when they're not arrested or when they uh, escape the militant group, are left hopeless and uh, without anything to do. What that means is it's very easy for them to fall back and join the Al Shabaab militant group. Or in, in case there is anything that happens, then warlords who are still in other parts of the country can decide to take advantage of these young people and use them uh, mm. for their own gain. That meaning that then the war in the country will never end. And that's why the uh, international community is also using this as another front of fighting the Shabaab militant group. Mm. No, Sarah, before I let you go, when can you expect it to be fully operational, the center? This particular one, they're saying uh, the building you have seen in the pictures there uh, is where they will be sheltered. So it's, about, it's a matter of uh, completing the renovation, uh, stocking it, and having uh, the, the, the recruits in. Most of them are actually uh, being sheltered either by the Somali National Army or being sheltered by the African Union troops. So it's not like there are not people already waiting to use it. So they're saying as soon as possible. They don't give a timeline. They're saying as soon as possible uh, they will be able to start using it. Thanks for that. Those were interesting news from Sarah Kimani, who's live to us from Nairobi, Kenya.